Hi guys, it's Hayley here from Hayley's Weight Loss Journey. I hope everybody's keeping as safe and well as you can at the moment. We're still in scary times, so I hope that your health is okay. I hope things are going as smooth as they can for you, and it looks like hopefully we're going to start getting a bit of normality back soon. If you're new to this channel, well, so am I. I've just come across to YouTube from Instagram, where I run a fairly large account under the name Hayley's Weight Loss Journey. On there I've documented my weight loss over the last couple of years, the struggles that I've had with it, the maintaining side of things. I talk a lot now about fitness and exercise as well. But what I do like to talk about is well-being, mental health, body image, self-esteem and confidence issues. Um, because they're all something I've struggled with and I think it's really important to use these kind of platforms to speak about mental health. So today's video is going to be a mental health video focusing on anxiety. I'm going to talk a bit about what anxiety is, the sort of signs and symptoms of it, ways that you can get help and the treatments that you can go through, um, all of which I have gone through myself. So I'm also going to explain my story with anxiety. Um, I will do it as raw and honest as I can. It's quite a scary thing to speak um, openly online about things like mental health. But the more of us who do it, hopefully it's going to start breaking this stigma. I think that's come across um, leaps and bounds over the last few years with people speaking about it. So the more that we can talk about it and normalise this issue of mental health so that people know that they can reach out, that they can get help, that mental health is just as important as physical health. Even if this helps just one person, I'll be pleased with that. Um, so if you're interested in any of the topics that I spoke about at the beginning of this, anything that I talk about on the Instagram account, please do press subscribe down below so you can stay updated with my videos. If you've enjoyed this video, then do give it a thumbs up at the end. I'd really appreciate that. Um, I'm also linking in the bio below some ways that you can get help with uh, your mental health. So I'm going to be putting some helplines and some websites on there. I'll speak about that again at the end of the video. But just so that you're aware, there are some ways that you can reach out printed just below this video. So what is anxiety? Um, just a disclaimer, first of all, I'm obviously not a doctor, a GP, um, I'm not an expert in any of this, but I have gone through this um, and it's affected my life in quite a large way. So I do feel like I have quite a lot of knowledge with anxiety um, and I can just share my journey with you. So the way that I would sum up anxiety would be a feeling of unease or fear. And something I have learned is that anxiety can be healthy in small doses. It's something that can be necessary to keep us safe in certain situations, to keep us protected. But the problem is when anxiety starts to take over and become quite irrational and it can become quite overwhelming. And that's when it really starts to affect your mental health. So some signs and symptoms of anxiety. Um, I'll go through some physical ones first of all, things that I've experienced. Um, you can also do some research on this online, but some of the most common symptoms of anxiety can be a racing heartbeat. Um, you can suddenly feel almost like a panic attack coming on, and I'll speak about panic attacks later on, but you can feel that your heart is beating faster than it should be for the situation that you're in. Um, headaches, being lightheaded, dizziness, uh, potential chest pains. Um, I would always say never ignore a chest pain. Don't always just put them down to it being something like anxiety. Um, I've done quite a lot of medical training for my job. So if you are suffering from any sort of chest pain, do take that serious as a physical pain. Um, and also loss of appetite, some people can find. Um, unfortunately, that's something that I didn't get with my anxiety and I went the other way. Um, so I was a comfort eater. So when my anxiety was heightened um, and I was feeling uneasy or distressed or upset, I would comfort eat. Um, so loss of appetite wasn't something for me, but it is a very common symptom, which can then obviously cause weight loss. Um, and some mental health side effects of it, things that you can feel that people can't always see these effects on you. Um, you'd be feeling nervous a lot, not being able to relax, always feeling like you're on edge, like something's not right, even when there is nothing wrong. You just can't get that niggling feeling out of your head that something isn't right. Um, it's a very irrational fear. So as I say, when it seems like everything's fine, but you can't stop worrying, you should think that well, there's nothing for me to worry about. I'm just at home. One thing I got a lot was I'd be laying in bed at night um, and I'd suddenly just feel terrified. And there was no reason for me to feel fear. But that's where the irrational side comes in. There's no logic behind it. Um, it's just a really fearful and uneasy feeling. Um, feeling upset and tearful, um, bursting out into tears for no reason, just feeling upset when nothing's wrong. Um, and worrying about the past and the future. So things that have happened in the past that you can't change, they're no longer going to be a part of your life. It's not something that you logically need to be worrying about, but you just can't let go of it. So again, laying in bed at night and thinking about something that happened even years before and you are still worrying about it. And also on the flip side of that, the future. So things that are coming up and sometimes there can be some real normal anxiety in there. So if you've got an exam coming up or a job interview or a driving test, 
you're going to feel some anxiety that's completely normal but when you start to feel major overwhelming anxiety over little things like potentially meeting a friend for coffee or popping to the shop or a phone call that you might have to make the next day that's when anxiety can really creep up on you so that's sort of the signs and symptoms the main ones obviously uh, mental health is very personal to everybody so there could be things that you experience that nobody else will um, certain things that might confuse you with it. I'm not an expert, I'm not gonna say that you will feel this, you will feel that, but those were the, certainly the kind of things that I felt was just unease, real irrational fear about doing day-to-day -day tasks. So there's various different ways that you can reach out and get some help. Um, there's certain charities out there, doctors and GPs as well, they're trained in this and they'll be able to guide you down the avenues that you need to reach out and get some help with. What I wanna do now is to go through my experience of anxiety like otherwise I'll be repeating myself if I start to tell you different ways that you can go and different treatments and that because I've actually tried a lot of these myself so if I just tell you about my process um, the way that I went through anxiety the way I got help and the treatments that I received um, then I'll be able to give you some information in there as well about how you can reach out and get some help so I'll be as raw and honest as I can it's quite a scary thing as I say um, speaking about your own mental health online um, but I do feel it's very important to do so I'm now 30 years old and I was always quite confident through my teenage years and early 20s. However, my anxiety really started about four or five years ago. There was what I think would be a trigger for that. I lost a very close family member um, five years ago and my nature is to really suppress things. That's my character. Um, I'm fine, I'm fine, I carry on. Um, I don't tell people when I'm not okay. I'm getting better with that now. But I really suppressed all my emotions and just carried on and sort of fought through it. So it was about a year after that that I really started to notice that I wasn't okay. Um, and to be honest, I had no idea what was wrong with me. I had never heard of anxiety. I didn't know what anxiety was. I feel like it's spoken a lot more now in the last few years. But even going back four or five years, I didn't know what anxiety was. I've never even heard of the word. If you'd asked me what it meant, I couldn't tell you. But what I did start to notice is that I was uneasy all the time and I was absolutely terrified out in public. Um, I've always had trouble with my self-esteem, my confidence. I'm quite insecure about the way I look. Again, that's something I've worked on. Four or five years ago, I was in quite a bad place with that. So my anxiety tends to hit me more when I was in public. Um, and one of the main places was the supermarket. That was a real trigger for me, was going shopping to the supermarket. And I don't know if other people will relate to this, but I felt like I was being judged by what I was buying, what was in my basket, what aisle I was down. And I just felt like everybody was watching and judging me. Nobody cared. Nobody cared at all. And I know that rationally. People are going around their day to day life. They do not care what you're up to. I wasn't running down the aisle naked. You know, I wasn't waving crazy flags in the air. I wasn't trying to draw attention to myself at all. Nobody cared that I was out doing my shopping. But to me, it felt like the whole world knew a secret about me and they were whispering it. So I would look at somebody, if they were so much as looking anywhere near me, I would think they were looking at me and they were judging me and they were thinking negative things and that they were talking about me. I thought they were going to go home and tell other people about this awful looking girl that they've just seen in the supermarket and you won't believe what she's just bought. Um, and I didn't know what it was and I didn't know where this fear had come from because before that I was very confident um, You know, I would go out to bars and stuff with friends and I would always be quite confident doing that But I reached a point where I just felt nervous going out in public um, And I would cancel a lot of plans with friends and that's one big thing um, with mental health and anxiety especially um, If people don't know that you're suffering with it um, You can be sort of that flaky person um, who's always cancelling especially last minute because you may be looking forward to going to something and then you hype yourself up and then you get far too nervous to leave just before. Something I was doing was cancelling plans a lot. I would rather stay home in the security and the comfort of the flat that I was renting because it was my safe place and I wasn't out and there wasn't people judging me and looking at me. Um, I really didn't like going to crowded places. I remember going to a festival once about four or five years ago and um, just feeling so out of my comfort zone because there were so many people there that I didn't even go to the second day. And I told my friends I was ill. It was sort of a two day event. I went to the first one and I struggled so much. And I didn't know what was wrong with me. I didn't know it was anxiety. So I told them all I had a headache and I couldn't go back the next day. So that was sort of where it started with me. And I knew that something wasn't quite right. And I just thought I'd lost my confidence. Um, but it gradually got worse. And I mentioned earlier, sometimes you'd just be laying in bed at night um, and you'd feel your heart start to flutter, uh, get, getting sweaty. 
um, you'd suddenly come over really hot and just really scared as though you knew something was about to happen but nothing was. Now I was quite lucky that I never really suffered with panic attacks. I've had one panic attack in my life. Um, <laughs> it's kind of a funny story The people who know me and will know what panic attack I'm talking about will find this quite amusing. Um, but it was actually nothing to do with anxiety and my mental health. It was to do with my fear of boats. I have a very, very um, large fear of boats. Finally decided to get on a boat a couple of years ago and it went awfully. Um, and that's the only time I've ever experienced a panic attack. I can't remember much of it, so I can't sort of talk too much about it. Um, luckily, I don't have much of a memory of it. But I was quite lucky with my anxiety. Um, that I never really suffered major full-on panic attacks. For me, it was just like a constant feeling of unease and worry. It got to the point um, before, still I didn't really know what was wrong, but I could only go shopping in the middle of the night. I would look up 24-hour supermarkets um, and I would drive ages to go to a 24-hour supermarket at two o'clock in the morning, just because there'd be less people in there and I would feel like people weren't judging me. Um, I just wouldn't go out very often. I had this real irrational fear, and I think this is quite a common fear, that something was stuck to the back of me or that my skirt or dress was tucked up. Um, so I would constantly, when I'd be out in public, be touching the back of me to make sure there was nothing there, to make sure that my clothing was right. Um, that was one big physical thing for me, is that I could not stop touching my back to make sure there was nothing on it. And because of that as well, I used to hate waiting in queues. So things like going to a petrol station um, or having to queue in a shop, if somebody was stood behind me, that would really trigger my anxiety because they were stood there and watching and I'd think, well, if there's something on my back now, of course they're going to see it because they're right behind me. Um, I started to become, I don't want to say depressed. Um, depressed is a huge word and there's so many different levels to depression. Um, I've not been diagnosed ever with depression, so I don't want to say I was depressed, but I certainly showed signs of it. I was staying in a lot, I wasn't talking to people, um, my family did notice this massively, I just stay locked up in my flat, I wasn't happy um, and I wasn't in a good place, I wasn't happy with work, um, I was still going to work but again I was very anxious at work, nobody particularly knew anything was wrong because I put this mask on and this cover but I would come home and I'd be very upset. Um, one of the turning points for me when I knew that I had a real problem um, is I went to a local shop one night, just one of the express stores, um, and I just had to pick up something small like milk. And I was sat in the car out the front and there was people in the shop. Um, I'm trying to do this without getting upset as well because it's a very personal thing. But I sat out the front of the shop in my car and I could see people in the shop and um, I couldn't go in with anybody in there at all. I had to wait until everybody exited the shop and it took ages. Um, because obviously somebody would go in and somebody would come out and I sat in my car and I just waited and waited and waited until it looked like nobody was in the shop and I got out of my car and I went to the door and suddenly of course somebody turned up to come into the shop and I freaked out and I got straight back in my car and I went home and that was the point for me where I realised this isn't normal, Something, something's really wrong here, you can't be around anybody at all. Um, so... <laughs> That was the point when I knew that things weren't quite right um, and I went home and I had a really bad few days um, to the point when my mum was actually quite worried about me, she hadn't heard from me, she knew I wasn't right and she just turned up at my flat, she got in her car, she drove over which was quite a way, she found me in the flat and she said this this isn't right, you know, you've, you've hit a point now where you can't carry on with this anymore. So I still hadn't diagnosed myself with anxiety, nothing, I didn't know what was wrong with me, I just knew that I wasn't right. But that was the point where she was the first person I'd spoken to and I'd said, I'm not right. She was the first person who knew, she saw me without this mask. People might have had ideas when I was cancelling events and things, but she was the first person I actually opened up to about it. And we sat there and we chatted for hours. Um, and in the end, I ended up packing up my stuff, going back to her place. Um, and I stayed there for a few weeks. I ended up phoning up work. I went off on long-term sick and work were incredible about it. Um, I spoke to them and I just said, it's my mental health, I'm not right, I'm not in the mindset to be at work at the moment. And one of the best things they said to me was they said, don't take a week off, uh, go speak to a doctor and take as long as if you need, wait until you need to come back. Because if you come back in a week, nothing will have changed, it's not enough time to heal. So they said, wait, sort yourself out, 
get yourself back into that place where you are ready to come back. And it took eight weeks. I had eight weeks off work on long-term sick before I finally went back into work. And I'll tell you about what happened in those eight weeks. But that's one thing that really um, I was quite grateful for with work was not the take a few days off and sort yourself out. It was take enough time. And that's something I really stress to people. Things don't change overnight. Um, and it's okay. It's okay. I mean, I don't know everybody's personal situations with their job and the rules with the the long-term sickness but my work was great about it and the second I've mentioned it was mental health there was no more questions asked so after a few days I plucked up the courage to go to a doctor um, I knew that I still wasn't right I didn't know what what was wrong but I knew I thought I could be suffering with some sort of depression or mental health I still didn't know what anxiety was um, but it took me a long time um, from going through feeling all of these emotions to even consider going to a doctor because my mindset was doctors are there to help you when you have something that's physically wrong with you they're there for illness and they're there for injury and one of the biggest biggest things i learned and what i try to stress to people all the time now is that not all injury and not all illness is physical you can't always see somebody's pain and mental health is just as important as physical health it really really is it's just another aspect of your health so I put off going to the doctor. I didn't want to seem silly. Um, I didn't want to walk in there and feel like I was wasting their time because there's nothing wrong with me. It's all in my mind. Um, and that was something I had to overcome. Um, and I really, really stress that to people. Just because it's in your mind doesn't make it any less dangerous or any less painful. Mental health is, if not more dangerous than physical health sometimes because you can't see it and you can't see somebody suffering. But I finally plucked up the courage to make a doctor's appointment. I didn't really know what I was gonna say, didn't know what I was gonna do, but I just knew that I had this appointment and I was finally doing something about it. So I went to the doctors. Obviously my anxiety was through the roof um, because this was something out of my comfort zone. I walked through the door of the doctors and I cried. <laughs> and I sat down and I cried and I cried um, for quite a while. And this poor doctor <laughs> um, just had to sort of sit there and watch me cry, um, but they didn't say anything they didn't judge me for it they knew they knew that I was coming to them with a mental health problem um, you could see I was overwhelmed I was emotional and I just sat there and I felt like all of my emotion came out because I was finally speaking to somebody and it was a relief and when I'd finished crying um, the doctor you know asked me what was wrong what what was I feeling what was I feeling physically what was I feeling mentally and they explained to me anxiety and it really was the first time that I knew about anxiety and I can't tell you the relief when I found out what anxiety was because it was everything that I was feeling and it was the biggest weight off my shoulders to be able to say this is real, this is something and there is a diagnosis for it and I'm not going crazy. This is an actual thing and it has a name and other people suffer from it and it's actually very common. So it was a huge relief for me, even just being able to speak to a doctor and find out what anxiety was. So once I'd calmed down, I'd spoken to the doctor. Um, the first thing that they did was they put me on some medication. I'm not going to talk about the names of tablets that I've been on or anything like that. Um, but they put me on an anti-anxiety medication um, and it was also for depression as well. So it was like a combined tablet for anxiety and depression. Um, you took this tablet one a day. Um, Mental health and medicine um, and taking treatment for mental health is something that I've posted about on my Instagram account, something that I feel quite passionate about. Um, in terms of medication, what I had to learn as well with the whole going to the doctor for something that's not physical is that medication is also there for things that aren't physical. I always thought, you know, you've hurt yourself, you take a painkiller or you take blood thinners or medication is there to help you physically. It's absolutely not because we do have sometimes um, hormone imbalance in our brains and we just need that medication to try to reset those hormones, to reset ourselves, to help sort out that imbalance. Sometimes we're missing a little bit of something from one side of our brain um, and it's a bit overwhelming on the other side. So medication, there is absolutely no shame in taking it is what I'm trying to say. Um, there's still a bit of a stigma with it. It's been spoke about a lot more the last few years and it's great. I think a lot more people are honest about taking medication. Um, so before I say my experience with medication, I just want to put it out there. 
you do you. If you need medication, if it helps you mentally or physically, then it's helping you and that is great. And that is the main thing is that it helps you. Everybody is so different. And the reason I say that is because I didn't like being on the medication. Um, I took it for a couple of weeks. I got very, very bad night terrors. Um, I've always suffered with nightmares, um, quite vivid dreams. <clears throat> However, when I started taking this, uh, the medication, it really made those um, very, very real. And I was back living at my flat, I was by myself, and it got quite scary. Um, and I also, I just didn't like the idea of putting that medication in me. I've always been a bit like that. Um, things like the contraceptive pill has never agreed with me. I don't like putting hormones in my body. Um, I feel like it sort of really upsets the balance. So that's why I go back to saying there is absolutely nothing wrong with taking them. I'm not judging anybody for taking them. There is no shame at all. And they really help people. But for me, it just didn't work. I just didn't like being on them. So I stopped taking them after a couple of weeks. The doctor, when they'd given me the medication, had also put me on the list for CBT therapy. So I got put on the waiting list to have CBT therapy, cognitive behavioural therapy. And it took six weeks for me to go um, back to the NHS for my first one hour session. And I had a one hour session each week for six weeks with the same therapist. And CBT therapy, what they try to do is look at the triggers of your anxiety, look at the signs and symptoms, look at certain things that happen, the irrational side of anxiety, recognizing when it's unnecessary and irrational anxiety. And to give you some coping skills and mechanisms to try to help deal with that, move forward, to recognize the anxiety and it's not going to get rid of it completely. There's no miracle cure to say, oh, it's anxiety, now I can forget about it. But at least if you can recognize that it's anxiety um, and that's why you're feeling this way, then there are certain skills and things that you can learn um, to help deal with it and minimize it. Now, as I said at the beginning of the video, um, I'm not somebody who used to tend to speak about my problems. Um, which is very ironic now that I run the Instagram account and I'm extremely honest about things that I've gone through. But at the time I was quite a closed book um, and I used to suppress a lot. So the therapy to me was very daunting and it took a while for me to really open up in there. I spent a lot of time crying. Um, I've never cried more than that period in my life when I was feeling anxious all the time. But usually for the first 10 minutes of therapy, I would sit there and cry um, and I would try to come up with little ways to stop myself crying. Like I would put fake eyelashes on um, before I'd go uh, so that I wouldn't cry so that they wouldn't fall off. And the therapist in the end got to know this and she just used to tell me to take my lashes off when I got in there because she knew I was going to cry. Um, however, I did start to open up. How much it did for me, I don't know because I'm not really that kind of person um, to explore therapy because again, I'm quite a closed person, but it must have done something because my anxiety did gradually get better, even being able to recognize that. Um, so I can't knock therapy at all. I'm very glad I did it. I'm very glad I went through that. It was all funded by the NHS. I didn't go private with it. So I'm very grateful for that service as well, but it must have done something because I'm certainly in a much better place than I was back then. And I think the main thing it did was just to speak about it. And that's what people say all the time about mental health is that one of the biggest, biggest ways of dealing with it and one of the sort of relief that you can get from feeling mental health is just to share it and speak about it and know that you're not the only person. And it's so much more normal than you think. We really need to keep normalizing this stigma with mental health because it affects so many of us. So I think that really helps being able just to speak to somebody about it and get it off my chest and to be told you're not crazy. It's okay, a lot of people go through this. What you're going through is completely normal. Here's a few things that we can help you with. And the main thing was just recognizing that anxiety. So since that point, I've been learning to live with my anxiety and deal with it. It is still there. It's nowhere near what it was. I now have a lot more confidence going out um, with friends, going out to public places. I'm still not a big fan of crowds. Supermarkets can be a bit of a trigger when I have bad days with anxiety. Whereas before, I think I had almost every day was a bad day with anxiety. I was living with it constantly. Um, now I have my good days and bad days, and I certainly have a lot more good days. It's quite rare now that I get a bad day with anxiety. Um, but I've sort of learned to live with it. And a few of the things um, that I can mention from my own experience are things that have helped calm me down with anxiety and sort of find a little bit more of a peaceful mindset. Firstly, obviously, it was talking to somebody. Um, the more that you can share your problems it really is so true that problem shared is a problem halved um it just helps 
uh, to get it off your chest, you're not suppressing it and building up. So talking to people would be one of my main things. And I've also learned to deal with my emotions more recently through exercise. Um, even if you can get out there and go for a nice long walk, um, it can do wonders for your mental health. I'm not talking about physical health here. Um, it can just be so great at clearing your mind, getting you out the house, giving you some fresh air, especially if the weather's nice, the sunshine can work miracles. And I'm really learning to sort of put not just anxiety, but all emotions into exercise. If I'm feeling frustrated about something, I'll run and I'll really get my emotion out that way. So going for walks or trying to get into some form of exercise, including things like yoga, very mindful type exercises, it's not something I've particularly explored, um, but I've had, you know, friends and family who have had some really, really great results from things like yoga and meditating. Um, I know it can be very, very peaceful, very therapeutic for your mind. Also keeping a balanced diet um, can be really helpful and that can help with keeping a decent sleep routine. The more sleep you can get at night. One thing I didn't talk about in my experience of it um, was that I wasn't really sleeping very much at night. What I used to do was be up all night with anxiety and I'd sleep most of the day. And it's very easy that way to sort of fall into this pattern of feeling depressed and upset um, through lack of sleep. So trying to get into a regular sleeping pattern, there's things you can research that online, things that might help you. Um, you get certain oils and scents, you can have a regular bedtime, you could read before bed. Um, there's a lot of things now as well, where I say that sort of the mental health movement has become a lot more spoken about, a lot more public over the last few years. Um, it's brought a lot of people on to do things like podcasts and audio books. There's a lot of audio guides out there, people speaking about their own experiences through podcasts. Um, and also things that can calm you down. So you can get a lot of sort of these apps on your phone now um, where you can listen to either music or people speaking or stories and they're designed to help you calm you down if you're feeling anxious. If you're on something like public transport and you know that you're feeling a bit anxious, pop your headphones in, listen to something like that. That's something that's really helped me, um, especially on things like getting on a train used to be really scary for me, but listening to an audio book or a podcast would really help with that. You can also get support groups out there. Um, again, if you do decide to go down the avenue of speaking to your doctor or GP, which I can't recommend anymore, um, they can put you in touch with things like support groups and also charities online. As I say, I've put some of them down in the bio box below. Um, if you are like I was very nervous about going to a doctor or a GP to seek some professional help and you're not quite at that level yet, please check out these charities. They can be completely anonymous. You can speak to somebody on the phone, you can speak to them over text. You've got ones like the Samaritan, which are 24 seven. So if you're worried in the night, um, if you wanna to speak to somebody when you're not around anybody else, you don't want anyone to know that you're calling, they are anonymous, call them up. You never know, it could just be that first step that you need to take in the recovery with anxiety. Um, and the other thing as well, speaking to people who you know. So you've got sort of the two sides of it. You can either go and speak to a GP or a professional or a charity and you can get some real good advice from that. But alongside that, you can also speak to your friends and family. Make them aware that you're not okay because chances are whatever you're feeling, they've probably felt that to a degree as well. Mental health affects almost everybody and unfortunately anxiety affects more people. Um, than what we probably realise. And so from speaking to my friends um, and almost sort of apologising about the way I used to be quite flaky um, or unconfident out in public, actually they've all gone through that same thing as well. So if you can, just bring yourself to speak to somebody in a safe place, somebody who you trust. It can be friends, family. And if you're not quite there yet, please do have a look at these charities because they really are there to help. I really hope that this video may have been relatable to some people out there. There also might just be even one person who was like me, who was feeling these kind of emotions and they didn't know what anxiety was. And I really wish that I'd have had a video like this just to explain to me how normal this is. That anxiety is a real thing. It's diagnosable, it's treatable, and you really can overcome extreme anxiety. I'm not gonna say like some miracle that my anxiety is completely gone. I think it's something that I'll always suffer with slightly. Um, I'd say, say I do still have bad days with it, but I do have very few bad days now. And coming from the place where I was, if you would have told me back then that you will get better from this and it won't always be like this, I probably wouldn't have believed it. I've had to go through this journey and through this process, which has taken years um, to come out the other side to be so much more happy. Uh, my self-esteem has grown, my confidence has grown. I can go to the supermarket in the daytime now, um, but there is light at the end of the tunnel. If you're feeling any of these kind of overwhelming emotions, I can just urge you to reach out and get some help. That's all I can do. 
Um, even the first step, as I say, with having a look at these charities, just reaching out anonymously and getting some help. Your doctors and your GPs, they really are there for this kind of thing as well as physical health. Mental health is just as important. They are trained in this. They see this all the time, probably every day. Um, so you're not going to seem silly going to the doctor. You're not going to be wasting their time. They're not going to laugh at you. They're not going to shrug it off. They are going to help you. Um, and if they don't, then you've got a really serious issue with the doctors in your area and that needs to be looked at because they are dealing with this stuff day in, day out and it is real and it's dangerous. Um, so please do go and get some help if you can relate to anything in this video. If you're someone like me who's gone through anxiety and you've gone through this process, I hope you're really, really proud of yourself um, for what you've, whatever you've been able to overcome. Um, I think that the more that we can talk about this, the more we can normalise it, just break that stigma. I'm sorry if I've bored you to death with my story, but there it is, everything um, out on the table with what I went through with mental health and anxiety. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more of my content, please press subscribe. You can also check out my Instagram, Haley's Weight Loss Journey. I'll link that down below. But as I say, we're still in scary times. I think mental health is more important than ever at the moment. So please keep talking about it. Reach out, get help. Please be aware as well. Um, potentially friends and family who may be going through it. Have a look out for some of those signs and symptoms that I mentioned earlier in the video. Please keep safe, please keep well, please keep as happy as you can at the moment and hopefully I'll catch you soon in another video.